Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to KNews episode 58 about... Nah, not yet. It's about Blue Origin's New Shepard. However, I also want to mention that Ariane 5 will launch today carrying two communication satellites. Skymaster 2 for Australia and GZ-18 for India. Liftoff to achieve a geosynchronous transfer orbit is scheduled for 2030 UDC and it will as usual take place at Kourou, French Guiana. New Shepard is a suborbital launch vehicle which shall bring tourists to the edge of space in your future. These will sit on such a capsule on top a hydrogen fuel booster and the very special thing is of course the landing capability of it, which means it will land autonomously in a vertical position similar to SpaceX Falcon 9. However, I say similar, but there are quite a few differences between the two which makes each of them play in a separate league. If both rockets were pitchers, New Shepard would throw its payload a hundred kilometers up while the Falcon flings its payload 40,000 kilometers far, so it basically never comes back and is in a stable orbit. The goal of tomorrow's launch, which will by the way happen at around 1500 UTC, is to test New Shepard's emergency or launch escape system. For that it will launch straight up as usual, but then fake in normally. When something goes wrong during flight, the capsule can separate itself from the booster forcefully with a small rocket motor mounted below. This can happen at any given time, but probably the most dangerous moment is at maximum aerodynamic pressure. Flying up, the rocket has to push the air out of the way, which many people forget weighs actually 1 kilogram per cubic meter. Assuming an area of attack of 4 square meters and a velocity of 300 meters per second, this would add up to 1200 cubic meters or 1.2 metric tons the capsule has to push out of the way per second. That's a lot, but is of course a very simplified calculation since the air density or weight changes with altitude. Important to know is there is a lot of load on top and in order to get away from the booster the capsule has to fly faster than it, which creates even more pressure. The acceleration has to be higher because if they for example lose control, the rocket would continue to burn and as the capsule separates, the weight the booster carries drops and it would speed up even more quickly. So the rocket motor has to be really strong, but not too strong because a launch aboard near space would otherwise put way too much g-loads on the crew and hurt them. Now my capsule in KSP is stabilized with its overpowered onboard gyro which keeps its pointy nose up. However a capsule is not aerodynamically stable like that and actually wants to flip pointing its heavy bottom section forward as it does during re-entry. The real one uses a chemical reaction control system like this to keep it pointing in the right direction. Now this is not much of an issue in a regular New Shepard flight because the capsule separates far above the atmosphere where aerodynamic properties don't play such a big role. A launch escape on the other hand could, at least in my opinion, go terribly wrong because a hard flip at such speeds would not be very healthy for the crew and I think the capsule could even take some damage, but that is just speculation. For comparison, a Dragon V2 escapes with its trunk attached, which has winglets at the end of it, helping with stability. I'm really looking forward to see how this will turn out and the capsule is not the only part which could disintegrate. The booster is not even expected to survive such an abort. One reason is of course the capsule's rocket motor firing at it. But even if it survives that, it could still take a lot of damage from the sudden pressure on the top kicking in. I'm not entirely sure if they will continue to fire the engine after separation, but if not it could definitely also flip around and I doubt the booster could take that. However, since it is fairly short compared to bigger orbital rockets, it is really hard to tell, especially because the trajectory and speed are different as well. Moving straight up, the atmospheric pressure decreases much more rapidly than going to the side, so there are a lot unknown variables. Now there is of course also the possibility that nothing breaks and in that case the booster could either land safely and be awarded with a place in a museum because it's being replaced by a new version or say goodbye with a giant explosion hitting the desert with partly filled tanks. Whatever will happen it will be amazing to watch and I really hope you will have the chance to do so live. The link to the stream is as always in the description. In the end I want to give a shout out to my patrons who support my monthly crowdfunding campaign. I know it takes much to pay for something which is free and I really hope I can do it justice. Thanks a lot guys. Okay, that shall conclude episode 58 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.